Next up, secondary amenorrhea, which, as we mentioned, is defined as a lack of menses after a period where normal menstruation had existed. Quick, what's the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea? Pregnancy. That's right. Pregnancy, like another case we'll see in a bit, is a physiologic cause of secondary amenorrhea. Never forget to get a pregnancy test on anyone presenting with primary or secondary amenorrhea. All right, just like before, let's break down the causes of secondary amenorrhea into those same three categories. Brain, aka hypothalamus or pituitary at the top of the scene, ovarian in the middle, and anatomic disorders at the bottom. Before we get into the specific causes of secondary amenorrhea, remember that any of these etiologies can also cause primary amenorrhea if it happens before the onset of menses. Let's start at the top. Secondary amenorrhea can be caused by a decreased secretion of GnRH by the hypothalamus, just like in primary amenorrhea. In this case, however, instead of a congenital deficiency, GnRH is depressed as a result of severely low caloric intake, such as what happens in anorexia nervosa, or excessive exercise. We're talking Olympic athlete-level caloric expenditure. And there goes the party planner, making a run for it. Too bad she stepped on that GnRH bag making an audible rustling noise. That alerted everyone to her presence. With excessive exercise, the body just doesn't have enough calories to support pregnancy. So it shuts down the menstrual cycle entirely in order to divert that energy to more vital systems. This phenomenon is actually seen so often that there exists a female athlete triad to describe symptoms seen in elite female athletes or women with severe restrictive eating disorders. The triad includes amenorrhea, disordered eating, and osteopenia from lack of calcium and vitamin D intake. So to recap, in acquired GnRH deficiency, secondary to starvation or excessive exercise, you've got low GnRH, resulting from a hypothalamus trying to divert energy elsewhere, low FSH and LH, resulting from lack of GnRH stimulation, and low estrogen, resulting from low FSH. Moving down to the pituitary, hyperprolactinemia, or elevated levels of prolactin in the blood, can cause secondary amenorrhea by inhibiting secretion of GnRH by the hypothalamus via negative feedback. The most common cause of hyperprolactinemia is the development of a prolactin-secreting anterior pituitary adenoma, aka prolactinoma. Prolactinomas are benign tumors of the lactotroph cells in the pituitary gland that secrete prolactin. The tumor forms a mass located in the cella turcica. If the tumor is large enough, it can cause headache and or vision changes due to the tumor compressing the optic chiasm. Check out our million-dollar pituitary sketch for a more detailed discussion of the neurological symptoms caused by pituitary adenomas. The elevated levels of prolactin produced by these tumors can also cause galactorrhea, aka lactation, and breast soreness due to proliferation of milk-producing mammary glands in the breast. Prolactin-producing tumors aren't the only way to get hyperprolactinemia. Excessive serum prolactin levels can also be a side effect of antipsychotic medications with dopamine D2 receptor antagonist effects, such as risperidone and haloperidol. Normally, dopamine acts on the lactotroph cells of the anterior pituitary to inhibit secretion of prolactin. Dopamine antagonists block the action of dopamine on these receptors, inhibiting the inhibition, double negative, and causing increased secretion of prolactin by the anterior pituitary. See that poster of a boxer in the hallway? Punching the pituitary like nobody's business? This should remind you of all those causes of hypothalamic and pituitary dysfunction that can interrupt the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis leading to secondary amenorrhea. So seriously, check out that million dollar pituitary sketch for all the different ways you can knock out the hypothesis. All right, let's move down from the brain to the ovaries. As you'd expect, surgical removal of the ovaries in a woman of childbearing age will result in secondary amenorrhea. This is represented by the ant, carrying away the ovarian flower pots in disgust. Secretion of estrogen by the ovaries is a critical part of the normal hypothalamus pituitary ovarian hormone axis. Expect an increase in LH and FSH due to a loss of negative feedback. Remember, if LH and FSH levels are high, we know that the pituitary is working normally, so the problem must be downstream, leaving only the ovaries and anatomic disorders of the genital tract as potential causes. Oh, dang. Grandma's just turned on the embarrassing baby picture slideshow. If she could just, um figure out how technology works. Let's finish up with a special cause of secondary amenorrhea. Like pregnancy, it's not a disorder per se, it's physiologic. Menopause is defined as secondary amenorrhea lasting for at least 12 months that's not caused by any other pathology. Natural menopause is a result of depletion of follicles in the ovary, kind of like this last wilted follicular flower. Remember the labs that go along with amenorrhea caused by ovarian dysfunction, without follicles and their granulosa cells, estrogen production decreases. In addition, levels of inhibin B, 
which is secreted by follicles, decrease as well. This causes FSH levels to rise significantly. Think of it as the pituitary trying in vain to stimulate the development of ovarian follicles that just aren't there anymore. Menopause is usually diagnosed clinically, but if it's unclear, an elevated FSH level can be used for diagnosis. Patients in the menopausal transition, also called perimenopause, will present with hot flashes and night sweats. Once full-on menopause is established, vaginal dryness is the most common symptom. As one of the normal functions of estrogen is to increase vaginal secretions, bone density also suffers. As lack of estrogen reverses the normal inhibitory effect estrogen has on osteoclastic resorption of bone. Just think of this degraded and cracked bony table leg. Check out our osteoporosis at the Natural History Museum sketch for more info on the pathophysiology of menopause-associated osteoporosis. The median age of menopause is 51. If signs of menopause are present before age 40, specifically irregular menses and high FSH levels in the postmenopausal range, this is abnormal. We call this primary ovarian insufficiency. This is most commonly a result of chromosome or genetic abnormalities. But for the purposes of step one, all you need to know is that the symptoms are the same as those of menopause. The only difference is that it happens before age 40. All right, we're at the end of the line. Anatomic abnormalities of the genital tract. One example of this type of disorder causing secondary amenorrhea is Asherman syndrome, or scarring of the endometrial lining, usually resulting from repeated endometrial infection or instrumentation, such as dilation and curatage. Scarring of the endometrium prevents it from building up and shedding normally like it's supposed to, leading to the symptom of secondary amenorrhea. Remember, the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis is still completely functional, meaning hormone cycles will be completely normal. Well, was not expecting such a fiery finale, but that's about it for primary and secondary amenorrhea. Remember to keep in mind each level of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the ovaries, the uterus, and beyond. The hormone levels will most likely give it away. With hypothalamic dysfunction, like in congenital GnRH deficiency, hyperprolactinemia, or way too much exercise, expect GnRH, FSH, LH, and estrogen to be low. With ovarian dysfunction, like in Turner's, menopause, or primary ovarian insufficiency, expect FSH and LH to be high, and estrogen to be low. With uterine dysfunction and beyond, think normal hormone levels. Quick, what's the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea? Pregnancy, I said it first, I win.